I'm glad you've took the time to tune in to another podcast of The Prodigal Son. You know, I bring my prayers to you and for you every day that I do this podcast for a reason. I want you to understand and know the love that God has for you and every other person that walks the face of this earth. That is my earnest desire and and privilege to bring you these prayers to let you know that God loves you and He wants more than anything to be part of your life. These prayers come out of Ephesians. These are Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, but I've adopted these prayers for for you and every other person that walks the face of this earth, that you would have your spiritual eyes open to understand and know God's love, His mercy, His grace, and His goodness. Glory to God. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is His body. It is made full full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that He has opened my eyes to that love, and that is my desire for every person that walks the face of this earth, that they could come to understand just how much God loves them. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the vessel that you can speak through. Lord, use me today. Guide and direct. Lord, and I want to thank you and praise you for all that you're doing in this podcast. Thank you and praise you for the people that are being set free from a religious bondage that this world has thrown on them. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all the partners of this ministry. Lord, the faithful partners that sow into this ministry to help us do what we do, and that is to give your word away free of charge to anyone that will listen, to show them your love, your mercy, your grace, and your goodness through the truth in your word. Lord, I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over those partners today, a hundredfold return on everything that they sow into this ministry, everything they sow into your kingdom. Lord, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. You know, uh, yesterday we were, we were uh, talking about no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, and, and I want to go on and touch on and and talk about a, a scripture that we talked about yesterday, and that's Hebrews four sixteen. 
It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. You know, the Lord gave me a thought this morning. We talked about this yesterday, but I felt like the Lord would have me to go back and, and, and talk about it again. But there's, there's certain places that you're, you're comfortable as a person. You know, you're, you're comfortable. You, most people are comfortable at their parents' house. They're, they're comfortable at certain family and friends' uh, homes. And, and they feel like that they're at home. And, and, and those people make them feel like they're at home. But but what I want you to understand, there's multitude millions of people here on that 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 live on this earth that don't feel comfortable going to God boldly, the way I'm talking about what the Word says that we can do, and that is come boldly to Him, to God's grace and mercy, and His throne of grace, and. They don't, they don't feel confident in, in, in what the Bible says that they can do because they've never realized that they're not living in the same, the, the, the same religious junk that, that, has ch- that really just messed them up over the years. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm a prime example of that. And, and I look to Luke 15 a lot of times for, for strength when, 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 I, when I go to feeling like that, that I'm 90, 900 miles away from where God wants me to be. Now, don't get me wrong. This is, this is, this is uh, very seldom anymore because of the truth in what God's word has taught me and shown me but there's times in there's been times in my life that I felt like that I wasn't that I couldn't come boldly to God's throne whether it be something I'd done something I'd thought about or or dwelled upon but I want you to understand something that if you will take his, take his word for what it says and take his word for, for uh, how can I put this? <laughs> I'm going to put it like a lot of people I've heard put it over the years. You can take it to the bank that what God has said about you, to you and for you in this book, you can take it to the bank. It's true. And you can count on that truth. You see, people don't understand that. People don't, people don't believe God's word like they believe that the sun's going to come up in the east every day. You understand what I'm saying? They don't understand that, that uh, they can count on God's word as much as they can count on the most, the most uh, uh, trustworthy person that they know. You can count on God's word more than that. But people don't don't understand that. That's the reason they can't come. Uh, they well, I, I say they can't come, but that that's the wrong terminology. They feel like that they can't come to God uh, that that way because they're not comfortable. They're not comfortable uh, believing God. And standing on what he said, and and believing what he said, and 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 just regardless of what they see or hear, standing on what God's word says. Because I promise you, if you'll take what we were talking about yesterday, Romans eight and one, there is therefore now no condemnation, and stand on that and believe that, and and uh, stand on. Other scriptures in the in the in the Bible, and I want to read one. We'll probably talk more about this one tomorrow, but I want to go to Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the seventeenth uh, verse. When I get to it here, because this is something. If you if you get this in your, in in your in your heart and in your life and, and, and stand on this, it'll change you. 
It'll change the way you look at coming coming to God's throne. I promise you it will. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When that when that gets down into your spirit and 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 sets you up, and you you may say, well, how's it going to set me up? It's going to it's going to pick you up and strengthen you to know that hey, this is God's word speaking to me, telling me that if Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I and if you'll get that and realize that and and stand upon those truths, you'll find you'll find a place in in your life that that <laughs> that there's more strength there than than a thousand armies could tear down. Why? Because you've you have gotten you have put God's word into your heart and 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 in it's got down into you into your being not just in your head not just mental assent or mental understanding mental belief but it but but it's got down into your heart and into your life that you that it they ain't nothing can dig it out nothing can make you uh uh say anything any different other than God's Word. Because I promise you, I promise you, if you will get into a place in your life that you can, without a doubt, like I was talking about yesterday, every situation that comes up, you say, what, what, what's God's Word say about this situation? What does God say about this situation? How is He guiding me? What does He want me to do? I'll tell you what he wants you to do. I'll tell you straight up and be just as honest as I know how to be. He wants you to depend on him the way you have the way you depended on your parents as a child. You understand that? You were dependent upon your chi- your parents to feed you and clothe you and take care of you, watch after you, and give you what you everything that you needed to live. And if you'll do that as an adult with God, and you say, Lord, I don't know what's coming next, but I'm going to depend upon you to take care of this. And, and that's come bo- that's coming boldly to God's throne. That's coming boldly to, a, to, to God and saying, look, I'm going to take you for what you said. I'm going to take you at your word, and I'm going to believe your word. I'm going to speak your word over situations in my life. Uh, honey, it'll change your life. It'll set you free from the bondages that, that religions put on you. I promise you there's multitude millions of people out here that that feel like God's so disappointed in them and so mad at them that he wouldn't have anything to do with them if he did, if they did come to him and that's a lie of the devil a prime example of that lie being debunked in the Bible is Luke 15:11 through 24 the stu- the story of the prodigal son the 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 scripture that this podcast is is named for when that young man left and done all that he done throwing away everything that he had and 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 coming to a place in his life that that he had nothing nothing that his father had given him he was expecting to go home and be a hired servant for the rest of his days. But as I've said it over and over and over on this podcast, he didn't get what he was looking for. He came home to a loving father that loved him, never brought up his mistakes, never brought up the sin and the shame and the condemnation that he felt over there in that that pig pen when he was feeding those hogs. No, his father restored him and loved him and, and, and put a robe on his back and shoes on his feet and, and a ring on his finger. And that signet ring meant to him and everybody around him that he was that father's son. And, and the father wanted him to know that. That's what I want you to know today is that this word promise you, promises you that same position. 
that you can count on him. I, I feel like I need to go back and read that last part of Hebrews again because I promise you if you get if you get that last part, you'll come to understand the first part. And and that's for, uh it says the first part of it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You 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 need something today, come to him. Come to him. It's his love and his mercy, his grace and his goodness that that will set you free from the bondages that you are that you are in. I don't care what kind, what you have done. I don't care the mistakes you have made. I do not care what has went on in your life. I want you to understand and to know that God is there for you. He loves you and he cares for you more than anything in this world. He died. He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to, for a sacrifice so that you could live forever in his kingdom. It's up to us to accept that. It's up to us to believe that and receive that for ourselves. You know, the prodigal son didn't expect anything when he got home, but yet he got everything. He got restored to the position that he had left. Why? Because the father loved him and he cared for him and and he wanted his son home. Home. That's what God wants for you. He wants you born if you're never if you've never been born again, he wants you born into his family. And if you are born again and just away from him, he wants you back. He wants you to come back to him. And, and know and understand just how much he loves you. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Confess Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Stand, stand upon the promises that God has given you and come boldly to, boldly to his throne of grace and accept him for what he is. And that's a loving father that loves and cares for you more than you'll ever understand in this lifetime. I want you to know and see and understand that you can come boldly to God. How? Through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. He's standing with open arms, waiting on you to come to him. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. I, I want to hear from you. If, if, if God has changed your life listening to this podcast, reading his word, studying his word, get in contact with us. We want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. If you've got a prayer, a prayer request, send it in. We want to agree with you according to God's word. We want to, we want to stand in agreement with your needs. I thank God for all that all my needs being met and yours too. You know, Philippians 4.19 says, For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God's promises are there. Receive them. Receive them. Send that, get in, touch, in, in contact with us. Send your prayer request in. If it, Like I say, send your testimonies in. I want to hear them. It strengthens me, lifts me up to know and understand that people's lives are being changed. Now, I want to take just a minute and thank you. Thank all the partners of this ministry for all that you do, faithfully sowing into this ministry to help us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to go out into all the world and give his word away free of charge to show the world that we live in just how good he is, just how much he loves them. And partners, you got a part in that. 
I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Glory to God. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.